YouTube removed community captions and several other essential features, but why? In the past year, YouTube has removed community contributions, comments on music channels, email notifications, and older unlisted videos for various reasons. The now removed community contributions are slightly different than closed captions, and were essentially captions in different languages that audience members could submit. This allows people that speak other languages to translate your content so that you can reach a broader audience, so that you can rank and search in those particular areas without having to do anything on your end. This allows your community to contribute the titles, descriptions, and subtitles on your behalf. To be clear, closed captions still exist and the creators still have the option of keeping the automated ones or spending the time to edit the captions to fix where the AI misheard them. And these automatic captions have definitely gotten better over the years, though there's still issues with them. Community contribution sounds like a good feature to help those with auditory issues and people who speak different languages, but there's a reason why we can't have nice things. The YouTuber JT was the first large channel to expose that people were abusing this feature for their own gain in 2019. So it looks perfectly fine before you do click on it, you know the title says we built the greatest thing in Minecraft, but when you click on the video, the title updates and it says subscribe to the channel in the description. But then at the very top of the description, there's a link which takes you to a completely different channel which says subscribe next to it. And it's not PewDiePie's, it's nothing to do with PewDiePie, it's a completely random YouTube channel. After being exposed for unwanted self-promotion, the people editing the French community captions certainly weren't happy. They took this out against JT and began writing vulgar things using their power. But it looks like this time I'm being attacked in the translations of PewDiePie and Jacksepticeye's videos. Now I've just got to say right here, I mean the titles and the descriptions, they're not really PG, they're pretty much attacking me. And I kind of have to address this because I'm getting loads of comments and stuff from them. Because anybody who uses subtitles or uses translations on their videos sees these titles which are attacking me. Because of the self-promotion and vulgar language, YouTubers unfortunately began having to turn off these captions. Can we talk about whoever does the subtitles for, P for Felix videos? Mar Happy Marcia noises. Unfortunately, I had to turn off subtitles because people keep promoting their own damn channels. It's so annoying. I'm sorry if you rely on subtitles. I hope uh, we can get it back soon. So, many of them began reaching out to YouTube asking for help with this situation. So a few people have spoken out about it. These people are Keemstar, PewDiePie, and Jacksepticeye. Jacksepticeye tweeted it out, he put it on his community tab, he said everything. He tried to get in contact with YouTube himself. All of us want Team YouTube to do a fix, you know, maybe they have to approve it before people can translate. Maybe make it so the public can't translate your videos if you have it switched on. Honestly, it's not hard to fix, and it would fix so much, because all these titles that I'm showing on screen right now were on PewDiePie's videos, Jacksepticeye's videos, Keemstar's videos, Logan Paul's videos of all people, and there's countless more other people as well. YouTube did come back with a response, but it wasn't acceptable and simply passed the blame and responsibility to the creators just like with reporting scam ads. YouTube don't have time for that, no no no. Why don't you just report them? <laughs> Oh, okay, so report everybody's video every time they upload then, okay? Because this is what the translators will do, right? As soon as PewDiePie uploads, they will change his title. So what, do you want us to report his video every time he uploads? And what's Jacksepticeye supposed to do then? Because he's turned them off until YouTube bring out a fix. And they just said it's your responsibility. So I take it as Jacksepticeye can't ever put it on his video again then. <laughs> your responsibility. Last time I checked, this was your platform and it was your responsibility. A few days after that, YouTube did come up with a somewhat acceptable solution. Now after my DM with them and everything, they said thanks for the patience. Based on feedback we've heard, we're introducing some changes to the community contributions. Moving forward, creators that have turned on this feature will need to manually review their community contributions and check for spam before publishing. Now once again, different people are going to have different opinions on this new rule. It fixes the whole translations problem because creators have to actually manually review them. Honestly, I thought YouTube were going to add a system where they check it for you, but at least there is a fix and I'm no longer involved in this situation. But it still relied too heavily on already busy content creators. And he said this is now a widespread issue on all popular channels. We can't be held hostage in our homes checking every five minutes if our video are demonetized or someone messed with our closed captions. We have lives too, we need to take our families out to dinner, go to gym, etc. 
It took 11 long months for YouTube to think of a permanent solution to this issue, which was simply to remove the feature instead of devoting resources to improving it. Yep, come September the 28th of 2020, all community contributions will be gone. And of course, many people in the community weren't happy about this. Believe it or not, many people genuinely spend their valuable time translating videos so that way deaf people and foreign people can actually comprehend everything. But I guess YouTube just thinks that's a totally fucking outrageous concept. As you can see by these various articles and this change.org petition. A better solution for this would have been a better tool for moderation, or even something like a bot comparing the translated text to Google Translate to see if it's at all close. The other factor that caused YouTube to remove this feature was that less than 0.001% of channels published community captions. There's literally no way 0.001% is an accurate representation. But that's not to mention the fact that big channels had to turn off this feature entirely because YouTube was refusing to give a legitimate solution. I find this a little hypocritical of YouTube because while it's an underutilized feature, they're telling us at the same time to create inclusive content. How do I think about audiences when making my content? Consider who's tuning into your channel and if your videos are truly welcoming a diverse audience. Having videos translated into other languages seems inclusive and would further help deaf people and those in non-English speaking countries to be able to watch more content creators, or vice versa with English viewers and non-English content creators. According to a tweet embedded within an article by The Verge, a creator even had a meeting with YouTube about the importance of this feature and the company still ignored that, like they do with many other creator concerns. YouTube did at least provide a free 6 month subscription to a subtitling service called Amara for creators who use the community contribution feature, but then after that those creators had to pay for a service that was previously built into YouTube for free. The second feature that was turned off is comments on artist topic channels. Artist topic channels are automated uploads of a musician's songs. For instance, when they release a new album, all the songs are uploaded to the topic channel. Or even original songs created for TV shows. One thing to note is that these topic channels are different from the artist's real channel, and those often have music videos on them because they're in control of the artist. The comments on the auto-generated tracks were turned off due to a lack of moderation since a bot uploads the tracks, but from my experience, the majority of comments were positive. Just like on videos that were marked as for kids, having no comments creates a very lonely and desolate place. It's nice when listening to music to read how it's affected people's lives. You can definitely still see that on lyric and music videos, but especially for newly uploaded songs, the auto-generated version is the only one available for a little while. The third thing that YouTube removed within the past year was email notifications. They were removed for having a ridiculously low click-through rate, or in other words, very few people opened the emails, and for most people it was clutter in their inbox. If few people open them, then why does the removal of this feature even matter? This would matter for mostly older viewers who relied on email notifications to see when their favorite creators uploaded. And as I understand it, email notifications were likely more reliable than the ones that are built into YouTube. I honestly don't care all that much about the email notifications being gone, and even when I got them on my other account in 2012, I never opened them. And in July 2021, YouTube made all unlisted videos and playlists uploaded prior to January 1st, 2017 private, for security reasons. In 2017, they changed the way that unlisted links work to make it harder for somebody to find the video if you didn't share the link with them. On one hand, having increased security is a good thing, and having fewer unlisted videos probably frees up some server space too. But on the other hand, this change has unintended negative consequences. There is an option to opt out of this, but this is going to break numerous things, from YouTubers with unlisted old videos to unlisted videos embedded on websites, and even choose your own adventure stories if the creator forgot to opt out. Not to mention affecting playlists that only select people had access to, like educational content. The removal of these features arguably make YouTube a worse place, although some of them weren't really used that much and so I understand why they removed them from a business perspective. After removing the previously mentioned useful features, YouTube is also trying to get rid of dislikes. But that's getting its own video in the future. Thank you everyone so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please do give me a like and a sub, because that really helps me out, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!